There are three factors that are particularly important when analysing terrorism and counterterrorism. First, the terrorist strategy. Second, what the terrorists actually want to achieve. And third, how to best fight them. Terrorism can be thought of as a strategy, as how some rational actors think about what their goals should be and how they best pursue them. If we think about terrorism as a strategy, perhaps the best analogy is one that my co-author Tom Parker has used. He calls terrorism political jiu-jitsu. The point of many terrorist groups is to try to exploit the strength of the state, to take the strength of the state and turn it against itself. Terrorists thus create a trap that many states walk into. Almost no democracies have fallen as a consequence of terrorism, but many have overreacted to terrorism and thus made terrorist groups stronger, more popular, and given them more recruits. Terrorist strategy, in a sense, involves setting a trap for the state, and states very often walk in straight into it. The second main point is about the heterogeneity of terrorist groups. All these different terrorist groups have a range of different aims. Some want to overthrow political and economic systems, some want to become part of the political economic systems and have their own state. But they have one thing in common. They all want to provoke the state to overreact. And it is surprising how often they succeed. And this takes us to the third point, which is how best to fight terrorism. In short, we have three different approaches to terrorism. See it as a crime, send in the police. See it as a security threat, send in the army. See it as part of a political problem, and send in the diplomats. Today, most counter-terrorist strategies employ an element of all three. I think it's fair to say that what most states are trying to achieve today in counter-terrorist strategies is robustness. It's a strategy that is tailored to the particular threat at hand, but that takes a long-term perspective rather than a short-term perspective. If we've learned anything from counter-terrorism over a century and a half, it's that there are no magic silver bullets. There are no quick fixes. It's almost impossible to defeat or annihilate a terrorist group. Today, most states and international organizations are approaching counter-terrorism policy uh, by means which we might call containment. The idea is that you can fight it in the short term, you can try to prevent it, you can deal with the consequences of an attack, you can prosecute the perpetrators of an attack, but to some extent, states have to live with an, le some level of political violence. Even if you can bring armed groups, or terrorist groups, into peace processes, there will be dissidents who try and spoil these processes by carrying on violent campaigns. A key point is therefore that terrorism must be contained in the long term, but not necessarily defeated overnight. In fact, efforts to defeat terrorism overnight are often counterproductive because they involve strong, sometimes repressive measures that end up giving the terrorists more recruits and playing into the terrorist narrative. If there is one lesson that we can learn from the last hundred years of liberal democracies fighting terrorism, it is that they must not abandon the moral high ground. Terrorism is best fought within the rules of law by means linked to police and intelligence and perhaps the most dangerous thing a state can do is to walk in to the trap set by terrorists by adopting quick, ill-considered, radical legislation in the wake of a terrorist attack, rather than thinking of it as a threat that must be contained, both in the short term, the medium term, and the long term.